Purge, Usage and Equations, Part 1. In this video, we discuss what is referred to as a purge, encountered in some chemical engineering systems. Firstly, we deal with what it is. Secondly, with when it is used. And thirdly, with equations that are associated with it. A purge is an outlet from a pipe that forms part of the internal circuit of a process. Its purpose is to force some of the fluid flowing in the pipe out of the process. It is used when it becomes necessary to force a substance that would otherwise not leave out of the system. Many chemical engineering processes are designed to operate under steady state. From a mass balance point of view, in a situation where a substance enters the system, does not get consumed, and does not leave it either, accumulation will inevitably occur. In a situation like this, the designer will be forced to remove material that would otherwise not leave the system. A classic example is that of an inert substance entering the process together with the process reactants. Let's now consider a concrete example of this. Imagine first that we have a system operating under steady state, where ammonia is formed from pure nitrogen and hydrogen, without an inlet. In stream F, nitrogen and hydrogen enter the process in stoichiometric proportion. Then, in the reactor, these reactants are consumed in stoichiometric proportion. Therefore, in stream S, we have, apart from the newly formed ammonia, some unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen that are still in stoichiometric proportion. In the separation unit, which is assumed to operate perfectly, ammonia vapor condenses, is liquefied by cooling, and leaves the system in stream O. Obviously, the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen, uncondensed and still in stoichiometric proportion, end up being recycled back to the reactor in stream R, which is combined with stream F to give stream M, which necessarily must contain nitrogen and hydrogen in stoichiometric proportion. The system can operate like this indefinitely. The single pass conversion is 62.5%, which has been calculated from the moles consumed in the reactor and the amount fed to it. Since not all of the nitrogen and hydrogen are consumed, the process has been designed to recycle them in stream R. It is important to be aware that under steady state operation, no accumulation of reactants occurs in stream R, i.e. their normal molar flow rates remain constant with time. Obviously, the overall conversion has to be 100% since, as can be seen by looking at the process flow chart, no reactant leaves the system. Let's imagine that after some indefinite period of steady state operation, the reactants supplied now contain an inert substance, for example argon, because they are of a lower quality. This impurity does not react and, being a noble gas, won't condense and leave the system with the ammonia. It will, however, leave the separation unit together with the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen. Let's see how this new situation develops. We first focus on the moment when argon just begins to enter the system with the nitrogen and hydrogen. This will be the situation at time zero. We see that two moles a second of argon are fed to the system and we know that it won't get consumed in the reactor. Therefore, it must accumulate. Let's look at the situation after 10 seconds. During that time, 20 moles of argon will have entered the system and be flowing around the internal process loop. After 100 seconds, argon will have entered and carries on accumulating inside the system. We see that after 100 seconds, 200 moles of argon will have accumulated in the system. And after 1000 seconds, 2000 moles of argon will have entered and remains trapped inside the systems without any possible means of leaving it. It now becomes clear that the argon in the recycle stream will continue to accumulate at a rate of 2 moles a second. This situation is unsustainable and will lead to problems in the system. For example, it could lead to any part of the system breaking down due to a constant buildup of pressure. This is a situation that the designer must avoid by forcing argon out of the system and, which is achieved in practice by introducing a purge stream into the recycle stream. A purge stream is, of course, undesirable since it does not selectively remove com components from the system and therefore results in a loss of reactants. However, it is essential for the steady state operation of a process where accumulation of a substance would otherwise occur. Since some reactants leave the system in the purge stream, the global conversion can no longer be 100% and has to be smaller. The result is that the production of ammonia won't be 200 moles a second as before since the system loses reactants. This causes the global conversion to be less than 100% on the one hand, but the extent of reaction to be smaller than 100 moles a second on the other. Let's see why 
by considering an overall mass balance on nitrogen. Nitrogen enters the process in stream F, gets consumed in the reactor by an amount that equals the extent of reaction, nitrogen stoichiometric coefficient is 1, and leaves the system in stream P. Since stream F provides 100 moles a second of nitrogen and there is a loss of nitrogen through stream P that is non-zero, the extent of reaction will be smaller than 100 moles a second as a consequence. Finally, the design is faced with a choice between two extremes, a small purge flow rate or a large one. This aspect, together with the remaining considerations regarding purge stream, is addressed in part two of this video.